Hey, Coach Miller here with B2B Lacs, and I have another college lacrosse recap for you. We're going to go through Division One in detail, and then we're also going to spend a little bit of time at the end with Division Three. That's where I played at Tufts. But real quick, guys, if you like these videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you leave a comment. Let me know what you're looking for. Also, if you're looking to take your lacrosse game to the next level, I have tons of online programs that you can choose from. Just click the link right below the video, and you can get yourself started. All right, with that being said, let's dive into this week four of college across the week of march 7th 2022 all right here we go all right so last week's storylines we had princeton go down to georgetown in washington dc and take them down 10 8 i'm going to show you a couple highlights of that game later on jacksonville lost to utah this is pretty interesting because Jacksonville had to go out west again. They were just out there when they played Denver and Air Force, and then they had to go out there again, and Utah took them down 16-10. Utah was a dog in that game. Michigan crushed Delaware. You'll see that was my pick of the week last week, and I got burned on that one. Uh, Michigan's undefeated. We'll talk a little bit about more of them. They play Harvard coming up. Cornell, they took down Ohio State 14-11. Ohio State has another big game coming up, which we'll touch on as well. And BU rolled over Colgate 18-6. They are undefeated, and we'll walk through what they have in store coming up. So my predictions last week, Rutgers over Stony Brook. I had it being a close game and Rutgers winning. They won by a goal. We'll talk about it. Basically, Stony Brook cut the deficit from 5-1 to one with about 5 minutes left to play, but Rutgers was able to hold on. I thought Delaware was going to beat Michigan. I was dead wrong on that. Michigan went out to Delaware and beat him by 10. I thought that Richmond was going to take down Duke. That didn't happen. Duke won by 6. The game was never really in contention. And then I had like a vague statement of good games to watch, like Notre Dame at Maryland, Georgetown at Princeton, Penn State at Penn. That was too vague of a statement. Obviously, those are going to be decent games to watch, and I need to be more specific in the future. But the Penn State-Penn game was a one-goal game, and Penn State is playing better lacrosse. All right, the ACC. Virginia, actually, tonight, they host North Carolina. There's no line on that game that I can see because I'm in the state of Virginia, and I can't see that. UNC this past weekend, they had a, a shootout with Denver. They ended up winning 17-16. to 16. Let's take a look at some highlights here. All right, beginning of the game, first goal of the game, we're going to see Jacob Kelly have a goal here on the doorstep. This is a pretty awesome move. Great dodge by the midfielder coming down. Great feed, fake shot, then a feed. Jacob Kelly played his high school across at Calvert Hall. His father is the head coach. All right, next up we got a goal by number two, Michael Lampert. He's from Whalen High School in Massachusetts, a small school. The assist is by number 22, Johnny Morocco. He does a great job of staying out of the crease, not getting a crease violation there. He's only a sophomore, Lampert, so we'll be seeing him around for a few more years. He must have been a hell of an athlete coming from a small school in Massachusetts. All right, Denver's man up. We have number nine, Alex Simmons from Culver with a goal here. The assist is from Riley Curtis. There's good ball movement here, and a goal for Simmons there on the doorstep. All right, next up, we see Chris Gray, first-team All-American, one of the best players in the country. He's from Shore and Wading River. He gets a goal, ties the game up a 2-2. Nice move there. All right, so this is a great goal by a long stick. This guy, Jimmy Freehill, he's 6'5". He's actually from Massachusetts as well. He went to a private school there, St. Sebastian. You can see a long pull, handling the rock, getting a feed, getting a good shot. Big guy there, also a threat on offense. All right, next clip, we have Ted Sullivan from Deerfield in Massachusetts, actually from Arizona. And he gets an assist from Simmons, who we saw score earlier. So... Denver playing pretty decent lacrosse here. Now, Denver on the ride here. They get a ride. UNC turns it over. They make them pay. They score. Ties the game up. 14-14. Denver goes on to go up 16-14 here, as you can see, with 6 minutes and 40 seconds left. However, North Carolina gets on the board here with a goal by number 8, Nikki Solomon, a senior from Georgia. And then they go on to win the game, 
score the next three goals, UNC wins 17-16. Notre Dame fell to Maryland 11-9. Syracuse lost to Army 17-13. And then they came back on Sunday and beat Hobart 18-16. They're 2-3. Duke beat Richmond, as I kind of touched on. And that UNC-Virginia game tonight, I mentioned it was at 7 o'clock. It's actually at 8 o'clock. So that will be something great to watch if you're around the ESPN+. Plus. American East, Stony Brook's 4-1. That's all we really want to talk about. We'll touch on Vermont a little bit here. So Vermont lost to Dartmouth on Tuesday. Dartmouth is actually 3-1, which we'll talk about when we get to the Ivy League. Vermont, they dropped Bryant 16-6 before that. So they were rolling into that Dartmouth game you know, with some confidence, but Dartmouth is playing well. Stony Brook, they're 4-1. They lost the Rutgers by a goal, which I talked about. They traveled to Brown on Saturday. They had two guys with five goals. Mike McCannell had five goals, and Dylan Pellinetti had five goals. So the thing that you'll find interesting about Stony Brook is they're not ranked. They're 4-1, and one and they have you know limited votes to even be in the top 20s because their schedule has been so weak. The Atlantic Sun Conference, Utah beat Jacksonville. That's all I'm really paying attention to here. The rest of the teams are pretty bad. Every team has a losing record. Georgetown's on top at 4-1. and one. Like I said, they dropped to Princeton 10-8. to eight. They traveled down to Richmond this Saturday, and Richmond's coming off a loss from Duke. That's going to be a tight game. I didn't see a line on that, but I do like Georgetown to win, but it's going to be tight. All right, here we go. Some highlights from the Georgetown Princeton game. First goal, we got Graham Bundy Jr., the junior from St. Louis, first team All American, getting them on the board first. Strong shot there. Next up, all right, Princeton's up 2 1. We have a transition play here. Basically, Princeton gets an unsettled situation where they end up pretty much getting a fast break, and Alex Slusher, a junior from Portland, Oregon, Puts it in for the third goal. They take up a 3-1 lead. You'll see that Slusher had a huge day. He ends up having five goals. Next up, Alex Trippy, number three. He's Trippy went to UNC. He's a grad student. He actually played his high school ball at Bullis. We played them. All right, we have Dylan Watson with the rebound coming off the goalie save for a putback. 7-6, tight game here at the end of the third quarter. You can see this in slow motion here. I mean, a great save by the goal. He just can't corral it. Watson comes, puts it back. All right, Trippy again. Lefty shot on the run, snipes it. 8-7. Uh, nine minutes left. Now we get 7.30 left. Princeton has the ball. They're man up. Who's going to score but no other than Slusher? This is his fourth goal of the game. They do a good job moving the ball. Pings it. They go up two. They're up two with two minutes left. Slusher again being defended well. Just has a great shot. Probably should have drew the penalty there. But then they score. Georgetown never gets it back. Denver's three and three. Villanova's three and two. Providence actually itched their way up to three and three. St. John's is one and four. Marquette's two and three. Like we talked about last week, the Big Ten has a lot of good teams. Three teams that are still undefeated. Hopkins is 3-3, three and three, but they're still ranked. I'm not really sure how. Penn State's playing better ball. Ohio State has a huge game this week at Notre Dame. So a lot going on here in the Big Ten. A lot of good teams here. Or Hopkins got pounded by Virginia 19-8 last weekend. Michigan is rolling. They play Harvard this week at Michigan. Harvard's 2-2. Two and two. We'll see what happens there. Rutgers beat Stony Brook. Ohio State dropped a Cornell. I watched that game, and I'm going to show you some highlights here. All right, here we go. Getting things started off here with Cornell. Number 27, Hugh Kelleher gets him on the board. He's a sophomore from New York. Next up, Billy Cole, little guy, 5'7", 175 pounds from the Hill Academy up in Canada, Brody Merrill School, Georgetown alum there. Great little play here. Playing tight. It was 3-1 Ohio State. All right? 3-1 Ohio State. We have 
Michael Long, a junior from Del Barton. Cornell's got a lot of Del, Del Barton guys on their roster. So they tie it up. Great little pick game there. Gets top side, puts it in there. All right, 3-3 three, three ball game. We have a great play by the defenseman up here. They ride, you know, get a good ride. Get the ball back, bink, bink, to number 41, John Piatelli. He's from Massachusetts. It's his fifth year. He had four goals on the day. He's from St. Sebastian. He scores again with a great move here. You can see the little shuffle step, stutter step, getting a spot, getting the inside, and putting it away. Take a look here. I mean, this is a great move. Basically dodges by two guys. Looks like he's going to pull it out. Goes back in. Buries it. All right. Good ball movement here by Cornell. Number 15, C.J. Kirst. Another guy from Del Barton. He's a sophomore. You're going to see him score here to put him up 6-3. And then he scores right after to put him up 7-3. So after going down 3-1, Cornell takes the lead 7-3, scored six unanswered goals. They go on to win the game, and then they shot up in the polls. They're in the top 10. And now Penn State, they're playing better. They lost the Penn in a tight goal, one goal game, but they're playing better ball, so we'll keep an eye on Penn State. The CAA Conference, Delaware's 4-2. and two. We already touched on them and how they dropped an egg against Michigan by 10 at home. I watched some of the UMass Yale game. UMass played Yale tight, and they usually do. Ivy League, kind of like the Big Ten. A lot of good teams. Every team has a winning record so far. Cornell is impressive. They're in the top five. Princeton beat Georgetown. They bumped up from 18th in the country to 7th in the country. So a huge bump there. Dartmouth is 3-1. First time in a long time. Brown has a big game against Stony Brook this week. And Harvard, like I said, is going to Michigan. The MAC. last week I said I was going to dive into Manhattan a little bit. So I did. I went on their website, looked around. Drew Kelleher is their head coach. He played at Vermont, graduated in 2009. Pr prior to his head job at Manhattan, he was an assistant at BU. And he started at BU when they you know, first started that program. And last year, he was a 2021 Coach of the Year in the conference. So there's a little information on Manhattan. NEC, St. Joe's lost to Drexel, 18-17. Hobart. Lost to Cornell, 15-12, and then Syracuse, 18-16. So they played two decent teams, played pretty tough, but lost them both. Merrimack has won three in a row. And remember, they bumped up from Division Two just a couple years ago. So they have a winning record at the Division One level. Patriot League, Bucknell's 5-0, but they haven't played anybody. BU is 4-0, and those two guys play each other this weekend, so we'll keep an eye on that. Actually, BU is favored, and the game is at Bucknell, so I like that. I'll touch on that a little bit later. Army's 5-1. They are the highest-ranked team in the Patriot League Conference. And then Loyola, they're 1-4. Holy Cross is 0-5. Everybody else is kind of fighting there in the middle, around 500. The Southern Conference, Jacksonville got bullied by Utah, which we talked about. High points, 3-3. Three and three. Richmond's 3-2. Three and two. They have a chance to make some noise this Saturday when they play Georgetown. Like I said, they lost to Duke this past weekend by 6. The interesting thing about the Jacksonville-Utah game was that Jacksonville played three goalies. They, Milliken started in the first half. Della Roca started the second half. And then a third goalie, Wokinoto, came in as a man down goalie in the second half and then ended up finishing the game. So I'm not sure what's going on with that situation with their goalie play, but playing three goalies in a game is usually rare. And VMI took down St. Mary's. That was a big win for VMI and a letdown for St. Mary's. All right, so some lines this week coming up. Villanova Penn. Penn's getting three and a half. Villanova is not a bad ball club. Penn gets a lot of love in the rankings and in the lines. I think three and a half is too much. Penn State Cornell. Cornell's getting three and a half. I've seen this game several times over the past years. They always play each other. 
Three and a half. Penn State's playing better. It's tough to say, but I like that. That game. I'm interested in that game. Boston University giving two and a half goals at Bucknell. Both undefeated teams. That should be interesting. Princeton Rutgers. Rutgers is at home, and they're dogs by a goal and a half. I like that a lot. I'll talk about it soon. Ohio State. Dog of two and a half at Notre Dame. Notre Dame is kind of in the same boat as Penn, and they get a lot of luck. Even though Notre Dame has a losing record, but you think that both those teams are coming off losses, so two and a half seems like a lot. And then the Brown Stony Brook game. Stony Brook's getting three and a half goals. They're going to Brown. I, that's too many goals, and I'll talk about it. But Brown really hasn't played that many people either. They played a lot of one goal games, but three and a half goals is a lot of goals. So we'll see. All right, so my predictions. As I just talked about, Stony Brook is getting too many goals. I like that game. I like Nova at three and a half. I like Ohio State at plus two and a half. I like Rutgers at plus one and a half. I like Stony Brook, like I said, at plus three and a half. And I like Bucknell at plus two and a half. So I like a lot of dogs this week. So <laughs> that's the way it is. I think Georgetown's going to win a close game at Richmond. I don't see any line on that game, probably because it's in Virginia and DraftKings won't show me that. And I think Notre Dame is going to lose three games in a row. So not only do I think that Ohio State will cover the two and a half goals, I think they will win. So Ohio State will get back on the winning track. All right, so my picks of the week in terms of lines, Stony Brook getting three and a half goals at Brown. Rutgers getting one and a half at home. All right, so we'll take a quick look here at the USILA rankings for the week of March 7th. So basically, as I talked about earlier, if you have a week schedule, you're not going to be ranked. So Stony Brook and Bucknell, they're not ranked. They both, uh, you know, Stony Brook has one loss. Bucknell is undefeated. They're not ranked. Ivy League's got some good representation here. Princeton jumped all the way from 18th, as I touched on before. And then also you have Cornell and Penn in the top 10. So a lot going on with the Ivy League. They're making a lot of noise. So we'll keep an eye on that. All right, NESCAC, just to give it a little love for my former conference. They all just played basically one game. Tufts dominated Colby 27-7. The best game looked to be the bowden Middlebury game. Bowden won 13-12. But the conference is just getting started. Every team pretty much has only played one game. Okay, and then to wrap things up here, just to take a look at the Division Three rankings, RIT's one, Salisbury's two, Tufts is three, Christopher Newport is four. They pounded Catholic 20 to 10 this past weekend. I'm, like I said, I'm keeping an eye on Catholic just because of Coach John Sachs, Tufts alum, my buddy. Salisbury, they beat Lynchburg 15-6, and Gettysburg had a big win over Stevenson 12-9. So they came back and beat Stevenson after losing to Salisbury uh, the week prior. So there you have it. There's my weekly recap for college across. We went through the Division One games. We talked on Division Three. If you like this type of video, like I said, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Give me um, any comments you have. And then also, if you're looking to take your training to a next level, if you want to play in college someday, make sure you start some of the programs I have right in the description of this video. You can start them right away. Start training to become a better lacrosse player so that your name gets mentioned on these weekly recaps in the future. All right, talk soon. Coach Miller.